Hello, good afternoon, guys. Um, I'm here with your Bible reading. YouTube is acting up something awful today. It keeps freezing the videos, and Shockwave Player keeps crashing. Whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Some days it does this, I don't know what's going on, but hopefully we can get through it this time. I already tried once, and I had to try to get back to it because it wouldn't move. The video kept freezing. So hopefully we'll have good luck this time. We're going to be starting off with reading all of Acts chapter 17 today. We have a lot to cover. You'll be seeing Paul and Silas going to a lot of places to um, spread the good news of Jesus. So let's go ahead and begin. Right now they're in Thessalonica. When Paul and his companions had passed through Amphilopus and Apponia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks excuse me, and quite a few prominent women. Yes, even women. But other Jews were jealous. So they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond, and they let them go. Which is very shocking, isn't it? Didn't flog them or anything. Amazing. Now, we're in Bera. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Bera. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now, the barren Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examine the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as also did a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. But when the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Bera, some of them went there too, agitating the crowds and stirring them up. The believers immediately sent Paul to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Bera. Those who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Now we're in Athens. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, He seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection is why they said that. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting 
of the Areopagus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to see what they mean. All the Athians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands, and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so they could seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For if he, if we live and move and have our being, as some of our own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, We want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagans, also a woman named Demarius, and a number of others. And that's where we'll stop with Acts today. That was all of Acts 17. Sherm, can you come get this, please? Just a second, guys. Yes? No, she's not here. Okay. Now we're going to continue on with Psalm 144. Psalm of David. I should have put the phone off the hook before I began. I apologize. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge. Who subdues peoples under me, Lord? What are human beings that you care for them? Mere mortals that you think of them. They are like a breath. Their days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rout them. 
Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, my God. On the ten-stringed lyre, I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David. From the deadly sword, deliver me. Rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons and their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters be like pillars carved to adore a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. And that was Psalm 144, a psalm of David. And lastly for our Bible reading today is Proverbs chapter 17, verses 27 and 28. And Proverbs 17, 27 says, The one who has knowledge uses words with his strength, and whoever has understanding is even-tempered. In Proverbs 17:28 says, Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent, and discerning if they hold their tongues. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a great Friday. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.